Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to approximate the integral from 0 to 4 of x squared dx using the trapezoidal rule for n equals 4. And so what this means is we want to approximate the area under x squared from 0 to 4 using 4 trapezoids. And the trapezoidal rule says that we can approximate that area by using this formula. We'll have that the area is equal to delta x, the width of our trapezoids, divided by 2 times f of x sub 0 plus 2 times f of x sub 1 plus 2 times f of x sub 2. And then we will add all the way up to 2 times f of x sub n minus 1 and then plus f of x sub n. And in this case, n is equal to 4, and so our last value of x sub n will be x sub 4. And so if we apply this trapezoidal rule to this scenario, we will have that the area is equal to delta x divided by 2 times f of x sub 0 plus 2 times f of x sub 1 plus 2 times f of x sub 2 plus 2 times f of x sub 3 plus f of x sub Right, so our first term is multiplied by 1, and then all of our middle terms are multiplied by 2, and then our last term is multiplied by 1. That is what the trapezoidal rule says. And so now, all we have to do to calculate this area is to figure out delta x, or the width of our trapezoids, and then figure out what these values of x will be equal to. And so we know that delta x, or the width, is equal to b minus a divided by n, and that is where a and b correspond to the interval that we are integrating over. In this case, we are integrating from 0 to 4. And so our value for b is 4, and our value for a is 0. And then n, we are told, is 4 because we're using 4 trapezoids. And so this will be equal to 4 minus 0 divided by 4. And so that's equal to 4 divided by 4, which is equal to 1. And so what that means is that our area is equal to 1 divided by 2, right? We plugged in 1 for delta x, and that will be multiplied by f of x sub 0. And so what would x sub 0 be? Well, x sub 0 is going to be your lower bound, and then the rest of our values of x will be found by continually adding the width of our trapezoid, delta x, to the previous value of x. And so what we'll have is that our first value of x, x sub 0, is 0, our lower bound, and then we will add 2 times f of x sub 1, which will be our previous value of x, 0, plus delta x, which we said is 1. And so 0 plus 1 is 1, so our next value of x is 1. And then we will add 2 times f of x sub 2, and x sub 2 will be 1 more than the previous value of x, right? We're going to take this value of x and add delta x, which is 1, to get 2. And then we will add 2 times f of x sub 3. And f of x sub 3 is going to be 1 more than the previous value of x, which was 2. Right? If we add delta x, the width of our trapezoids, to 2, we will get 3. And then if we do that one more time, we will have f of x sub 4, which would be 3 plus 1. And so that will be 4. Right? And so then to evaluate this, or to calculate the area, we are going to need to plug each of these values of x into our function. And so what is our function in this case? We were given an integral from 0 to 4 of x squared dx, but what is our function? Well, the function is going to be what is inside our integral, or what is in the integrand, which in this case is x squared. And so I'll write here that this is f of x. And so if we plug each of these values of x into x squared, this will be equal to 1 half times 0 squared plus 2 times 1 squared, right? We plugged 1 into x squared, but it's still being multiplied by this 2. And then we'll do the same for the rest of our x values. So we'll have plus 2 times 2 squared, plus 2 times 3 squared, and then plus 4 squared. All right, and so then if we clean up our work here, this will be equal to 1 half times 0 plus 2 times 1 squared. That'll be 2 times 1, so that's equal to 2. And then we will add 2 times 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4, times 2 would be 8, so we'll have plus 8. And then we will add 2 times 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9, so 9 times 2 is 18. So we'll add 18, and then we'll add 4 squared, which is 16. So we'll have 16. And then if we add all of these values together, this will be equal to 1 half times 44, 
which is equal to 22. And so that would be our approximation of the area under x squared from zero to four. And so maybe you're wondering how close of an approximation is this value to the actual area under the function? Well, if we were to evaluate this definite integral, we could figure that out. And so if you're interested in seeing that work, I'll put that up on the screen here for you. You can see how that definite integral would be solved. And so you can pause the video if you wanna look at this work. But as you can see, the approximation is pretty close to the actual value of the area under the function. Okay, let's look at another example. For our next example, we want to approximate the integral from zero to two of x cubed dx using the trapezoidal rule for n equals eight. And so this time, since n is equal to eight, that means we're going to be using eight trapezoids to approximate this area. And so using the trapezoidal rule, we'll have that the area is equal to delta x divided by two times f of x sub zero. And then the rest of our terms will be multiplied by two until our last term of f of x sub n, which in this case would be f of x sub eight because n is equal to eight. And so if we write out all those terms, we'll have plus two times f of x sub one. And then if I quickly write the rest of the terms, we will have the following. And so this is what the trapezoidal rule will look like for this scenario where n is equal to eight. And so if we wanna figure out what our values of x are going to be, we first need to calculate delta x, and we know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, and we already know what n is equal to, it's equal to eight, but for b and a, we need to go to our integral, because a and b correspond to the bounds of integration, right, we integrate from a to b, and so in this case, a is equal to zero, and b is equal to two, and so this is equal to two minus zero divided by n, which is eight, and that will be equal to two divided by eight, which is equal to one fourth. And so in this case, delta x is equal to one fourth, so we'll have that this is equal to one fourth times one half, right? This could be rewritten to be delta x times one half, and so we'll just have one fourth, which is what delta x is equal to times one half. And then we'll multiply by f of x sub zero, which is going to be our lower bound zero. So we'll plug in zero, and that will be added to two times f of x sub one. And so now we can figure out what all of these x values are because we know what delta x is. Each value of x is going to be one width of a trapezoid greater than the previous value of x. And so we just have to keep adding delta x, or in this case, one fourth to our x values. So if we add one fourth to zero, our value of x sub one will be one fourth. And then our next value, x sub two will be two fourths, right? We add another fourth to the previous one fourth. And then for our next value, x sub three will be another fourth bigger. So we'll have three fourths. And then for x sub four, we will have f of four fourths if we add another fourth. And then we'll have plus two times f of x sub five, which will be five fourths. And then we will add two times f of x sub six, which is going to be f of six fourths, right? We just keep adding another fourth each time, and then plus two times f of seven fourths, and then plus f of eight fourths. Okay, and so now some of these fractions can be reduced, like two fourths can be one half, and four fourths is obviously one, and eight fourths is two, but we'll worry about that when we plug each of these values into our function, which in this case is going to be x cubed, right? Our function in this case is x cubed because that is inside our integral or what is in our integrand. And so this will be equal to one eighth, right? One fourth times one half is one eighth multiplied by f of zero, which will be zero cubed plus two times one fourth cubed plus two times one half cubed, right? Two fourths reduces to one half. And remember, we're just plugging each of these values into the function, which is x cubed. And so that's why I'm just cubing each of these x values. And so then we'll have plus two times three fourths cubed plus two times one cubed plus two times five fourths cubed plus two times three halves cubed, right? Six fourths can be reduced to three halves. And then we'll add two times seven fourths cubed. And then we will have plus two cubed because 
8 divided by 4 is 2. So we have 2 cubed. All right, and so then if we go through each of these terms and cube them, this will be equal to 1 8th times 0 plus 2 times 1 64th. Right, so each time that we cube one of these fractions, we are going to need to cube the numerator and the denominator. So 1 cubed is 1, and 4 cubed is 64. And then we'll have plus 2 times 1 8th, because 2 cubed is 8. And then plus 2 times 3 cubed, which is 27, divided by 4 cubed, which is 64, plus 2 times 1 cubed. 1 cubed is 1, so we're just multiplying 2 times 1. So I'm just going to keep it as 2. And then we'll add 2 times 5 cubed, 125, divided by 4 cubed, which is 64. And then plus 2 times 3 cubed, which is 27, divided by 2 cubed, which is 8. And then we'll add 2 times 7 cubed, which is 343, divided by 4 cubed, which is 64. And then we will add 2 cubed, which is 8. All right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can go through and simplify each of these terms. And so we'll have that this is equal to 1 8th times, we don't need to write this 0 anymore, but 2 times 1 64th is 1 divided by 32, and then plus 2 times 1 8th, that will be 1 4th, and then we will add that to 2 times 27 64ths, which will reduce this to 27 divided by 32, and so we'll have 27 divided by 32, and that will be added to 2, so we'll have 2, and then we will add 2 times 125 divided by 64, that will just become 125 divided by 32, and then we will add that to 2 times 27 divided by 8, and that will reduce to 27 fourths, and then we have 2 times 343 divided by 64, and that's going to be plus 343 divided by 32, and then we will add our last term of 8. All right, and so then let's add up all of our fractions that are similar, right? We have some fractions with 32 in the denominator and some fractions with four in the denominator. And then we have two and eight that we can add together to just be 10. And so we'll have that this is equal to 1 8th times. And then I'm going to start by adding up all of our fractions with 32 in the denominator. So we have 1 plus 27 plus 125 plus 343. And that's all going to be divided by 32. And if you do that, you will get 496 divided by 32. And then if we add up our fourths, we will have 1 fourth and 27 fourths, and that will be equal to 28 fourths. And then we will add up 2 and 8, like I said earlier, to get 10. Okay, and so then this is equal to 1 eighth times 496 divided by 32 reduces to 31 halves. 28 divided by 4 is 7, and we're still adding 10. And so this is equal to 1 eighth times 31 halves plus 17, but we can rewrite 17 to be represented in halves if we write it as 34 halves, right? 34 divided by 2 would be 17. And so if we add those two numerators, this will be equal to 1 8 times 65 halves. And so that is equal to 65 sixteenths, which is equal to 4.0625 in decimal form. And so this will be our approximate area under x cubed from 0 to 2 using 8 trapezoids. And so then once again, if you want to see how close this approximation is to the actual area under the function, we could evaluate this definite integral. And so I'll put that work up on the screen here for you to look at, and you can pause the video if you want to see this work. But once again, as you can see, the approximation using the trapezoidal rule is pretty close to the actual area under the function. Let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we want to approximate the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of 1 plus x squared dx using the trapezoidal rule for n equals 3. And so in this case, we're using three trapezoids to approximate the area under this function from 0 to 2. And so using the trapezoidal rule, we will have that the area is equal to delta x divided by 2 times f of x sub 0 plus 2 times f of x sub 1, plus 2 times f of x sub 2, and then plus f of x sub 3. Right, so we multiply our middle terms by 2, but our first and last terms are multiplied by 1. And the way I determined how many terms we had is by looking at our value of n. Since n was equal to 3, that means that our last value of x that will be plugged into our function will be x sub 3, and so we just counted up from 0 to 3, 
and followed that rule that the first term is multiplied by 1 and the last term is multiplied by 1, but everything in between is multiplied by 2. All right, and so then if we want to solve for the area, we need to figure out what delta x is. And we know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. And in this case, if we look at our integral from a to b, a is 0 and b is 2. And so that means that delta x will be equal to 2 minus 0 divided by n, which is 3. And that is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so that means that we'll have that the area is equal to 2 thirds times 1 half, right? We have delta x times 1 half, so 2 thirds times 1 half, and that will be multiplied by f of 0, right? x sub 0 is going to be our lower bound of 0, and then every value of x afterwards, we are going to add 2 thirds to it. So we're going to have plus 2 times f of 2 thirds, and then we'll have plus 2 times f of four thirds, right? We added another two thirds to our previous value of x. And then for our last value of x, we'll have f of six thirds. Okay, and so then the area will be equal to two thirds times one half. You'll notice that these twos will cancel. And so we will have one third multiplied by f of zero. So we're going to have the square root of one plus zero squared plus two times the square root of one plus two thirds squared plus two times the square root of one plus four thirds squared plus the square root of one plus six thirds squared. Or actually I could write this as two squared since six divided by three is just two. So we'll have two squared, right? So our function in this case is the square root of one plus x squared. So for each of these values of x, we plug them into our function and we got each of these terms. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to one third times the square root of one plus two times the square root of one plus four divided by nine, right? Two squared is four and three squared is nine. And then we will add that to two times the square root of one plus four squared, which is 16. So we'll have 16 divided by three squared, which is nine plus the square root of one plus four because two squared is four. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to one third times one plus two times the square root of one plus four ninths. If you change one to nine ninths, right? Nine divided by nine would be one. And you add the numerators, we would have 13 ninths. And then we would add that to two times the square root of one plus 16 ninths. And so once again, if we change one to be nine divided by nine, we can add the numerators and we'll have 25 ninths. And then we will add that to the square root of one plus four, which is five. All right, and so then we can simplify this one more time before we have to plug it into a calculator because at some point we're not going to be able to reduce it any further. But if we do reduce it, this will be equal to one third times one plus two times the square root of 13 divided by three, right? If we take the square root of the top and the bottom, we have the square root of 13 and the square root of nine is three. And so then we'll have plus two times five divided by three because the square root of 25 is five and the square root of nine is three. And then we will add the square root of five. All right, and so if we plug all of this into our calculator, we will find that this is equal to 2.99103 and some more decimals. Right, so that is going to be our approximate value for the area under this function from zero to two. And so then if you wanna know how good of an approximation this is, you would need to evaluate this definite integral. However, at this point in calculus, you are not familiar with the method used to evaluate a definite integral like this. And so I'm just going to tell you what this is equal to. If you were to go through and solve this definite integral using a more advanced calculus technique, which you're not responsible for knowing at this point in the course, you would find that it is equal to 2.95788 and some more decimals. And so this is the actual value of the area, which as you can see, is pretty close to our approximation. All right, and so with that, this was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.